But Compton came back to see the company to let us know that he was all right. He became a prosecutor in Los Angeles. He convicted Sirhan Sirhan in the murder of Robert Kennedy and was later appointed to the California Court of Appeals. David Webster became a writer for the Saturday Evening Post and Wall Street Journal and later wrote a book about sharks. In 1961, he went out on the ocean alone and was never seen again. Johnny Martin would return to his job at the railroad and then start his own construction company. He splits his time between Arizona and a place in Montana. George Luz became a handyman in Providence, Rhode Island. As a testament to his character, 1,600 people attended his funeral in 1998. Doc Rowe died in Louisiana. In 1998, he'd been a construction contractor. Frank Fricani returned to Chicago and worked a postal route as a mailman. Joe Liebgott returned to San Francisco and drove his cab. Bull Ranneman was one of the best soldiers I ever had. He went into the earth moving business in Arkansas. He's still there. Hey, sir. Anyway, Alton Moore returned to Wyoming with a unique souvenir Hitler's personal photo albums. He was killed in a car accident in 1958. Floyd Talbert, we all lost touch with in civilian life until he showed up at a reunion just before his death in 1981. How we lived our lives after the war was as varied as each man. Carwood Lipton became a glass-making executive in charge of factories all over the world. He has a nice life in North Carolina. Harry Welsh, he married Kitty Grogan, became an administrator for the Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania school system. Ronald Spears stayed in the army, served in Korea, and 1958 returned to Germany as governor of Spandau Prison. He retired a lieutenant colonel. Get him around. All right, Webster. He's in company. School circle. For easy company, it was D-Day plus 434. Fast man would have had it, Perko. Listen up. Got some news. This morning, President Truman received the unconditional surrender from the Japanese. War's over. Regardless of points, medals, or wounds, each man in the 101st Airborne would be going home. Each of us would be forever connected by our shared experience. And each would have to rejoin the world as best he could. Louis Nixon had some tough times after the war. He was divorced a couple of times. Then in 1956, he married a woman named Grace and everything came together for him. He spent the rest of his life with her, traveling the world. My friend Lou died in 1995. I took up his job offer and was a personnel manager at the Nixon Nitration Works until I was called back into service in 1950 to train officers and rangers. But I chose not to go to Korea. I'd had enough of war. I stayed around Hershey, Pennsylvania, finally finding a little farm, a little peaceful corner of the world, where I still live today. There is not a day that goes by that I do not think of the men I served with who never got to enjoy the world without war.